Summer Mode, adapted by Betty Davis from the novel by Patricia Moyes. The offices of Style Magazine, sometime in the early 1960s. Oh, Teresa, what's this word? Uh, bullfightish. Bullfightish colours. Oh. Gorgeous, an amazed night out sort of way. Well, that's what the clothes look like. I leave you to translate my basic English into stylese. Oh, I wish we could print that as it stands, but... <sighs> Colour scheme of Mantilla black and pick it all red. Dazzling for the woman who death. How clever you are, darling. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. I suppose you'll be here all night. I shall certainly be here all night. I always am when we get out the Paris collection number. Assistant editor, Star Magazine speaking. Yes, she's here. It's Michael for you. Oh. Hello, darling. Well, Marjorie's got the art editor with her at the moment. Miss Masters, can you spare me a minute? Oh, with pleasure, Miss Field. I'm summoned to the presence. Right. Here we go. Into the battle. Okay, for dumpling Debs, but basically old hat. Oh, if only we could say that. Let's see. Classic in the modern manner. That'll do. Oh, and it's nearly midnight already. Oh, I loathe collection night. Hmm. Good old shift hacked round the hem with pruning shears. Hmm. Hello, Ernie. This is Miss Pankhurst. Oh, please come and get my thermos and make me some fresh tea. At once. Oh, I don't care if you are reducing a print. You can spare a minute. Right. Pruning shears. Let's try... The slim sheath with a ragamuffin look. Blow it up. Blow it up enormous and kill the hat picture. No, I won't have the hat picture killed. All right. One great hideous hat right across both pages. But give the spread some guts. Crop the picture here. May I say? I know I'm only a poor bloody photographer, but would you mind telling me what in hell you're proposing to do to that picture? Only cropping it a bit, darling. To show up the hat. The point of that photograph is in the line of the dress carried up to and through the hat. If you're going to cut it up into small pieces, I'd rather you took my name off it. I agree with Michael. Cropping the picture would ruin it. Thank you, Marjorie. Uh, why don't we use this picture, uncropped, facing a whole page hat picture, and kill the Monnier chiffon? Uh, Marjorie, my darling, you're a genius. <laughs> Donald! Donald Mackay! Yes, Mr. Bush! Take all these bloody layouts and burn them, you miserable Scotsman! Ah... <sighs> That should give us ten minutes' peace. I think I'll go and freshen up in the restroom, Miss Field. I'll be there if anyone wants me. Yes, Miss French. Hope you've sent Ernest home, Michael. Surely all the darkroom stuff is done by uh -huh. now? He left ten minutes ago. Good. Oh. Only twice a year, thank heavens. I think I'll lie down. See you in ten minutes. I hope to God she's okay. I've never known her show the strain before. She gets tired like everyone else not superhuman. And she is nearly 60. I suppose so. No, you'd never believe it. Depends an awful lot on Helen these days. More's the pity. <coughs> yes, well, uh, if you're using that hat picture big, I'll make another print of it. Hey, give it to me. Half past one and all's well. More or less. God, I look hideous. What's the taxi situation? No luck so far, I'm afraid. Miss Field's been trying for 20 minutes. Our managing director's across the road having dinner at the Orangery. How do you know? Well, that's his car, isn't it? The dark grey Bentley. Yes, that is Mr. Goring's car, but I hardly think we can descend on his dinner party to catch a lift. There are rather too many of us. And he has his own guests to look after, no doubt. Oh, Miss Field, any luck? No, Miss French, I'm so sorry. I've tried seven different ranks. I could go back to the beginning and try the first one again. Oh, don't yes. let's mess about. Let's get a higher car. They're all dead. Shall I do that, Miss French? Oh, good evening, Mr. Goring. Uh, how's it all going? Oh, very well, Godfrey. We are finished, except for Helen, of course. Uh, splendid timing on my part. I've been having dinner across the way, and I saw your lights were still burning. 
I think champagne will be in order, don't you? Oh, that's very sweet if you can't quit, but I'm No, no, really... no arguments. You'll all come with me in my car to Brompton Square for a mild celebration, and then Barker will drive each and every one of you home. Well, that's right. Right. Now, how many hours are there? Um, one, two, three, four, five, um, oh, six, six, of course. You'll come, won't you, Miss Steele? Our unsung heroine. I don't you? think I should, Mr. Goring. Thank you very much. I ought to be getting home. Oh. I came straight here from the Paris plane, and I've still got my suitcase. Oh, hell, sir, Michael and I. I'd forgotten all about them. Ah, I don't think we have room for luggage as well as people. Why don't you leave your cases here and pick them up tomorrow? Well, I... Thank you, Godfrey. It's very kind and I'd love to. Well, I'm not the man to say no to a party. Good. Come along, everybody. You too, Miss Field. But, Mr. Gordon... Oh, I insist. I'm sorry about you, Helen. I wish we could send you a bottle over. <laughs> that might not be a very good idea. I've got to stay sober. <laughs> Helen's tip for his tea on collection night. Uh, coming, everyone. Good night, Helen. Where's your deadline? The messenger's calling for a copy at seven. We're ordering the house, Helen. You do that. Good night. Good night. Good night, night. Good night Helen. Good night. Rags and tatters for spring. Gamines and gutter flaps like a jauntily through the collection in a riot of gaudy colour. Morning. Anything wrong? No, look, I've got to collect some urgent copy and they're all asleep in there. I've got to get in. Ah, it's okay. I've got a key. You the doorman? That's right. Just coming on duty. Oh, be quick about it, will you? Ah, don't you worry. Come in the warm. I will soon see what's up. Not like Miss Pratt goes to go to sleep on the job. Not like her at all. Mm. Mm. Ah, uh, just a minute. Uh, you wait out here and I'll have a word with her. Uh, you'll get your copy, don't worry. Miss Pankhurst? Yeah, what the hell's all this mess? Miss Pankhurst? Yeah, wake up. Wait. Oh, my God. What is it? Hey, what's happening? Quick, get the police. Get a doctor. Here, where's my envelope? Too well, with your envelope, she's dead. Cyanide poisoning, sir. No doubt about it. Hmm. In the thermos flask. I can smell it from here. Uh, have the photographer and fingerprint chaps got all they want, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Good. There's a bit of a mess in here, isn't it? Well, it looks like a hurricane, is it? I can understand the papers, but all them stockings and panties and whatnot all over the place. Somebody's been through that suitcase there in a hell of a hurry. Just picked things up, thrown them out higgledy-piggledy. Face powder everywhere. Bottle of perfume broken. Uh, stinks, don't it? Especially with a fire on. Mm, it's just a bit overpowering, yes. Pink blue roses scattered sparsely over chalk white mousseline de soie give drama to. And it's all. She stopped for a cup of tea. Yes. That young man downstairs will have to wait a long time for his coffee. All right, Sergeant, you can have the poor girl taken away, but be very careful nothing else is touched. Right, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, Miss Marjorie French is here, the editor. Oh, I'll talk to her straight away. Ask her to come up. Yes, sir. This is a terrible thing, Inspector Tibbet. Your sergeant didn't give me many details, but the mere fact that the police are here, I take it that Helen's death wasn't natural. No. I'm afraid Miss Pankhurst was murdered. <sighs> Have you ruled out suicide? Had she a reason? I'm not a gossip. The private lives of my staff are not my business. But I have been very worried about Helen lately. Mm -hmm. You'll understand, Inspector, that in any organisation that employs both men and women, there is the possibility of sentimental attachments. I see. And uh, Miss Van Curse? Helen had been having a somewhat tempestuous love affair with one of our photographers, um, Michael Healy. Hmm. Why should that drive her to suicide? Well, things have been going wrong. To be direct, 
Michael is a philanderer and never intended anything serious. Helen is a passionate, intense girl, uh, woman. Uh, how old was she? 34. Mm-hmm. She'd been going to Peter's a bit lately. I, I think Michael was trying to end it. Actually, between ourselves, I intended to send him to America for a few months. Mm-hmm. Not that that would have cured the atmosphere in the office. What do you mean by that? He's married to my fashion editor, Teresa Masters. I see. Well, thank you, Miss French. All this is very interesting, but I still think it was murder. How did she die? Someone put cyanide in her tea. But couldn't she have put it in herself? She could. I don't think she did. There was no note, and it was an extraordinary time and place to choose, right in the middle of a working session. And then her office seems to have been rifled, not only her papers, but her personal possessions. Personal possessions? What on earth do you mean? Well, perhaps you'd better have a look next door. Yes, Inspector, I agree with you. Helen was murdered. What made you change your mind? All this. And the fact that she hadn't finished her work. If I'd found a tidy office, all the captions and layouts neatly in their envelopes, and a list of instructions to the printers, I think she'd killed herself. Yeah. Anything else? Well, the office wasn't rifled. The state of the papers is quite normal. Helen worked surrounded by chaos and padded up meticulously afterwards. What about the suitcase? It isn't Helen's. It belongs to my secretary, Rachel Field. Oh. She flew back from Paris yesterday and came straight from the airport to the office. She must have left her case here because of some idea about the sanctity of my office. Well, why didn't she take it home with her? Because of Mr. Goring, our managing director. Mm-hmm. He looked in and invited us all back to his flat for champagne, but he had no room in his car for luggage, so he suggested it should be left here overnight. Uh, the invitation did not include Miss Pankhurst. Of course not. She stayed here to work. Hmm. So you all went back to Mr. Goring's flat? Yes. Mm-hmm. Two other friends of his were there. Nicholas Knight, the dress designer, and Horace mm-hmm. Barry, the manufacturer. Mm-hmm. We had a glass or two of champagne. Then Mr. Goring's chauffeur drove us home. All of you? Except for Nicholas Knight and Mr. Barry. Mr. Knight used his own car. Oh, and he gave a lift to Miss Field as he was going in her direction. They left a little before the rest of us. Then the chauffeur dropped Teresa and Michael in Chelsea and took me onto Sloan Street. After that, he took Mr. Patrick Walsh, our art editor, to Islington. What time? Just before three. Mm, Thank you. Uh, Did Miss Pankhurst have any relatives? I'd like to know something about her background. She had no family that I know of. Her parents were dead. I think there's a married sister in Australia. Uh-huh. She shared a flat with Alwyn Piper, our features editor. Her background. Uh, she's been on our staff ten years, worked her way up to assistant editor from a secretary's post. Mm. Where would the murderer get cyanide? Well, there's a supply in the dark room. It's used for reducing prints. Doesn't that point to someone who worked in the dark room? No. We're all in and out of there all the time, and we all knew about the cyanide. Isn't it kept locked up? Normally, yes, but I'm afraid on collection night rules go by the board. Michael was making his own prints from a store cupboard was open. Incidentally, the cupboard's in the room where the tea's made, and we were all popping in and out of there all evening. Except Miss Field, that is, and Helen herself. Well, thank you, Miss French. You've been most helpful. I've put an office at your disposal, Inspector. I presume you want to interview everyone who was here last night. Yes. Uh, Would you mind checking my list? Of course. Yourself, Teresa Masters, Michael Healy, and Patrick Walsh. Oh, and uh, your secretary, Miss Field. Anyone else? Donald Mackay, Patrick's assistant. Uh He left before the rest of us. And the darkroom boy, Ernest Jenkins. He was here till midnight. Jenkins. Oh, uh... There was Alwyn, too. Miss Piper? Hmm? Miss Pinker's flatmate? Yes. Uh-huh. She was writing her copy after the theatre. Do you know what time she left? I've no idea. I told her to go at half past twelve, but heaven knows how long she stayed. That's everybody. 
Hmm. Except Mr. Goring. Godfrey, but surely there you can't... There was nothing to stop him going into the dark room before he came to your office. No, but you can't Sir, really... I forbid you to go in. Get out of my way, you miserable little man. By God, not, he's going to keep me out of my own office. Patrick's alive. Not to be so I hear. Chief I'd better go and investigate. Who the hell are you? The Chief Inspector Tibbetts. I presume you're Patrick Wall. You're damn well presume, right. Now, will you get this fool of yours out of my way and let me into my own office? No, I won't. There's been a murder. A murder? Well, why did nobody tell me? Who is it? Helen Pankhurst. She was poisoned. Helen? Helen, my darling. My beautiful. It's, it's, it's not true. It's not true. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to make a statement, Mr. Walsh. Yes, 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 of course. Now, when did you last see Miss Pankhurst? I didn't clap eyes on her all evening. Last time I saw her was lunchtime. I took her out for a meal. She needed it. Poor kid. Why do you say it like that? I say what I damn well please. And nobody's going to go around slinging mud at the poor girl after she's dead. Who was slinging mud? No one, not a living soul. You liked Helen? I loved her. Mm. Do you know of anyone who disliked her? No. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Everybody loved her. Including Michael Healy and Teresa Masters? What filthy lying bastards have been saying things? It's not true, do you hear me? Not a bloody word of it. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know damn well what I'm talking about. I must send another word. You can't make me. Oh, very well. We'll leave it. About the cyanide, I suppose you know where it's kept. I know where the dark room store cupboard is. Oh, will you show me? All right. This way. This is the store cupboard. Everything's kept here. Unlocked. Hmm. Poison? Is it? Yes. Uh, I'll have to take it for fingerprinting. Well, since it's empty, I can't see any objection. Whose luggage is that over there? Fraser and Michael. They came back from Paris last night, straight after the last collection was shown. Uh, did you know Miss Pankhurst's thermos flask by sight? Oh, everybody did. Terrible battered old thing never parted from her on collection nights. Did you notice it standing around unattended at any time? Well, it was here by the store cupboard all night. I suppose Ernie made Helen some fresh tea and then forgotten to take it to her. We're all suspect. Any one of us could have slipped cyanide into it. And don't ask me how I know. The poison was in our tea. You as good as told me. Agreed. Now, tell me about the party at Mr. Goring's last night. Oh, damn silly business. Sipping genteel champagne with a simpering fools and vulgar bloody upstarts. Such as? Oh, Nicholas Knight and Horace Barry. Oh, Godfrey may have to be civil to them in the name of the great God advertising, but I don't see why we... Just to... tell me what happened. Well, we had a glass of champagne and made hideous small talk, avoiding tricky subjects. Then I got fed up and so did Michael. And we began being fairly damn rude to Knight and Barry. Oh, in a subtle way. Subtle? I see. Anyway, they soon had enough and went off. They gave Rachel a lift, and the rest of us went to... Well, what did you mean by tricky subjects? Nothing that would interest you. Oh, most things interest me. Well, I'm damned if I'll tell you, you bloody nosy Parker. <sighs> Perhaps we'd better have another talk later on, when you're in a more reasonable frame of mind. Reasonable? In all this madhouse, I'm the one reasonable Please character... Please go that's... away. What? Please go away. Now. Right. I damn well will. Oh, she she says, oh, darling, I'm sorry, but I'm not really sure. Uncle Henry. What the hell are you doing here, Veronica? A job, of course. Hey, if you're here, it must be true. Well, come in here. Miss French has given me an offer. I wouldn't go on with it. Oh, you know, you you're the last person I expected to come across. Why, I do a lot of modelling for style. Is it really true, Uncle Henry? Is she dead? Yes, I'm afraid so. Now, look, Veronica, you might be able to help me. Mm -hmm. Do you know the people here personally? Oh, not all of them. I never met Miss Pankhurst. Everyone says she was an awful dragon. I really only know Miss Masters and Michael, of course. Mm-hmm. Michael Healy, the uh, photographer. Yes, that's right. We were all in Paris together till yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I know Auntie vaguely, of course. Who on earth is she? He. It's Patrick mm -hmm. Walsh, the art editor. Everyone calls him Auntie, but not to his face. Oh. He roars at people. Oh, I've gathered that. Do you know his assistant, Donald Mackay? Yes. 
Mm-hmm. And what about... Uh... Yes? Ernest Jenkins is here, the darkroom boy. Oh, good. Send him straight up. You'd better be off. I'll see you again later on. Can I go out? Aren't you working? Well, only for a bit, I meant. I've got a sitting at 12 for young style, so I have to be back at 11.30 to make up. You've got quite enough makeup on already. Oh, all the girls in Paris had dead white faces and sooty eyes and mm. brown lipstick outlined in black. Repellent. Marvellous. You wait and see. <laughs> I think that's haunted. I know. I know. I know. Listen to me, you imbecile. I'm going in, now let go. What's all this? Come in, Miss... Uh... Piper. Alwyn Piper. And uh, Mr. Walsh. What is it now? I'm trying to save this lunatic girl from making a fool of herself. The sergeant said the way to come up. Ernest Jenkins. I know he did. I'm sorry, I'll have to see you later. Uh, wait outside till I call you. Okay. Now, Mr. Walsh, will you please go away? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Do you want me to go, too? Yes, please. Goodbye. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Ah, that's all right. Now, you shared a flat with Helen Pankhurst, didn't you? Yes. You got on well, the two of you? Yes, mostly. Not all the time? Not since... since Michael. <laughs> what did you want to tell me? Hmm? I know about Helen's affair with Michael Healy, you know. You, you do? How? Never mind. What I don't know is whether it has anything to do with the case. Oh, of course it has. He killed her. What? He was ghastly to her and she was desperate. That's why she killed herself. She didn't. She was murdered. But that can't be true. Oh, who on earth would murder Helen? That's what I want to know. Now, will you please tell me all you know about Helen and Michael Healy? It, it started about six months ago. She never used to go out in the evenings without telling me where she was going. We'd always been such friends. When did she first meet him? Well, that's a funny thing. She'd known Michael and Teresa for ages, long before she knew me. And she used to go out and say she was dining with the Healy's. And I believed her, though I felt annoyed they kept asking her out so much and never included me. Mm -hmm. And then one night when she was supposed to be there, I, I saw Teresa at the theatre. Not Michael, ju just Teresa. So I knew Helen was with Michael alone. Did you tell her? No. I just asked after Teresa when she got back, and she said, oh, she's fine. She cooked us a wonderful dinner. So naturally, she said it, I'd never have known she was lying. Did Mrs. Healy know? Teresa. Well, sometimes I thought she must know, but they still seemed so friendly. I, I think that may be why Helen didn't leave a note, so mm -hmm. as not to hurt Teresa. I have a feeling that you started these rumors, Miss Piper. Well, why shouldn't I? For Helen's own sake. She'd been desperately unhappy. He was getting tired of her. And I... St I still haven't told you the worst. The worst? A doctor will find out, of course. Hmm. You mean she was pregnant? Yes. Does anyone else know? Yes. Somebody. Who? I don't know. She told someone, but she never told me. And how do you know? It was yesterday. She was at home in the afternoon because she had to work all night. I, I went back to change for the theatre and I heard her on the phone. What was she saying? I can remember every word. She said, the doctor says it's quite definite. I don't know what I'm going to do. He'll never leave her. I wish I were dead. I see. Anymore? Oh, she must have heard me. She said, I can't talk anymore and put the phone down. And then? I went into the room and asked how she was, and she said, fine, apart from a cold, and then mm. she went into the office. Was that the last time you saw her? Well, I came into the office to type something after the theatre. I saw her working when I was going on my way to the lift, or uh, well, just a glimpse through the office door. I said good night. I didn't like to disturb her. What but time? After three, I think. Everyone else had gone. Well, thank you for telling me all this. You were right, too. Later on, I'd like to take a look at your flat, if I may. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Well, if you see the darkroom boy around, will you send him in, please? I've got to talk to him as soon as I can. 
Yeah, I'll make some more tea for Miss Pankers. Rang me up and asked she did while I was reducing a print for Mr. Ely. What time? About half past eleven. And you took it in? No, no. Mr. Ely was mad at me for leaving me work to make it at all. Mm. Reducing a print, eh? What is that? Making the print lighter. How do you do that? You rub the dark part with cyanide. Yeah. How much was in the bottle when you used it? Oh, more than half full. Mm -hmm. And who has the key for the cyanide cupboard? Well, last night was collection, see, so Mr. Healy had it. Well, that's to say the cupboards was all open and I took what I wanted. And Mr. Healy didn't lock them up when he left? I don't know. He sent me home at midnight. I see. Thank you, Ernie. Where will you be if I want to see you again later? In the dark room. Worst luck. Sure, you, bye. How well did you know the dead girl, Miss Masters? Oh, very well. We were very friendly. Uh, both you and your husband? Both of us. Especially Michael, of course. Oh, why, of course. Inspector, I know that all sorts of silly rumours were going round about Helen and my husband. Some of them may have reached you. Have they? Well, anyway, they're not true. They used to dine together occasionally. Or maybe there was a mild flirtation. But if so, it couldn't have mattered less to any of us. My marriage is perfectly happy. Helen was my friend. Well, since you knew her so well, can you tell me anything about her other friends? Well, no. I, I, I don't think she had any outside the office. Patrick's a daughter for years, of course. And Alwyn had a sort of schoolgirl crush on her. They were a strangely assorted pair to share a flat. Well, that was only because Helen was so good-natured. When Alwyn came to style a year ago, she had nowhere to live, and Helen put her up. It was only meant to be temporary. But Alwyn begged to stay on, and Helen got rather stuck with the arrangement. Mm. Did you ever think that Helen might have killed herself? What? Suicide. Had you thought of suicide? Frankly, no. I suppose it is possible. Why? Well, people commit suicide for the oddest reason. If you say she did... I said nothing of the sort. I asked for your opinion. Oh, but how could I know? Well, you were such great friends. She never said anything. I've been told uh, she seemed unhappy lately. Well, uh, she seemed tired, perhaps. You don't think her friendship with your husband went uh, deeper than you realized? Yes, perhaps it did. But the more I think about it, the more likely it seems. Uh, of course, it wasn't Michael's fault. He probably didn't even guess how she felt about him. But I'm sure that must have been the trouble. Yes, Inspector, I'm sure that's how it happened. You are? Yes. Well, now I think of it that way, it all seems to fit. Oh, no, no, that blasted cheetah's no good down there. There's one in having a wild animal in the shop, and everyone can see it. <sighs> Honey, make the bloody thing get up and prowl towards the camera. Oh, I don't like to, Mr. Oh, Ely. Go on, Poppet. Walkies. Hmm. Yep, there, there, that's marvellous. Hold that. Little smile, Veronica. Mm. Head to the left. That's it. Wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now kick the beast again. Oh, I didn't kick him. Just sort of prodded gently. Push, push. No, it's no good now. He's gone to sleep. Oh, never mind. Leave it alone for the moment. At least it's quiet and I've got to reload. Oh. Ernie, reload. Okay. Ah, there you are, last. For God's sake, do something with this animal of yours. Oh, mine? For the next reel, I want it standing up. Can it rear on its hind legs? <laughs> I'm afraid I... Oh, here she is. Here, I've been looking everywhere. Do you know there's a policeman downstairs? Well, how's my beauty, then? Here, I hope she's been a good girl. She's been a bit fractious lately, uh, constipated. Off her food, you know. Oh, she's been as good as gold, haven't you, Poppy? Oh, I wouldn't tickle her ears, miss. Oh. Right, right, let's get on. Uh, Veronica, darling, mm -hmm. uh, more to the left a bit. Uh. Fine. Now, I want the cheetah up on its hind legs like a heraldic beast, looking out left. Here, I say, that's asking a bit much. I always ask a bit much, and I usually get it. Yeah, well, uh... Well, perhaps if I stood on that ladder, I'll get a bone up. I don't give a damn what you do, so long as you're not in the picture. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I've got a bone. Here, no, 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 beauty, not yet. Here, this ladder all right, and safe as houses. Uh, this high enough? Oh. 
Oh, yeah, beauty. Yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, take the train on the dress sweeping out of the frame on the right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fine, thank you. Splendid. Hold it, everybody. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, that's splendid. Lovely. Lovely. Here, we've got some winners here. Ah. Fine, right, everyone. Five minutes break. Oh, really? Can I have a word with you, Mr. Healy? It was about the cheetah. Go and talk to Miss Field. She booked it. No, no, it isn't. I'm from Scotland Yard. Oh, good God. About Helen? Yes. Uh, look, I can't see you now. I'm in the middle of a sitting. You've got five minutes, and this is urgent. I want to know the truth about your relationship with Miss Pankhurst. Is, uh, is this an official interview? It's official, yes. I'm not uh, taking down what you say, is that what you mean? I see. Well, what do you want to know? I told you. I can only say that anything you may have heard was exaggerated. We were good friends, nothing more. You knew, of course, uh, that she was pregnant. What did you say? She was pregnant. She can't have been. She was. God, I... I suppose it was possible, but I never thought... God, how awful. I gather she hadn't told you. No. No, she hadn't. Poor darling Helen. You still deny that you were lovers? Huh? Oh, doesn't seem much point in denying it now, does there? Good. Now, is it true that recently you had been trying to break off the relationship? There was nothing to... Well, I mean, she must have taken it more seriously than I did. It wasn't important in your life? Well, no. I gather you went home last night leaving the poison cupboard unlocked. Yes, yes, I suppose I did. I still got the key in my pocket, as a matter of fact. Pretty careless, wasn't it? No, you don't know what this place is like on collection nights. Mm-hmm. When did you last see this uh, bottle of cyanide? I didn't see it, not consciously. I didn't use it myself. Transferred phone call for Inspector Tibbet, Dr. Broughton. Oh, thank you. Can I... Uh... Yeah, yeah, take it by all means. The phone's in the office on the right. I've got to get back to work anyway. I really know, Doc. Oh, why did it bloody well have to rain today? That dress needs open air and a duck pond. Well, Ernie, I know. can you uh, find a young calf and a five-barred gate? Hello. Is that you, Doctor? Yes. I've got a bit more news for you. I know you have. Definitely cyanide and definitely administered in the tea. Mm -hmm. Time of death between 4 and 5.30 a.m. Body aged about 33. Don't prolong the agony. I already know. Know what? That she was pregnant. Pregnant? (laughs) Don't be a damn fool. The woman was a virgin. Very kind of you to ask me to lunch, Mr. Goring. My dear Inspector, pleasure. Not a bad burgundy, is it? Excellent. You're being very abstemious. <laughs> yes, I usually am, but I trust it won't deter you. <clears throat> now, you, you must tell me how I can help you over this shocking business. Tell me about Helen. Well, she came to us as a secretary nearly ten years ago. Marjorie French noticed her and suggested she be promoted to the executive staff... I interviewed Helen. I was very impressed. She was an exceptional girl. She became editorial assistant, then sub-editor, and then assistant editor. Had she lived? Yes, Mr. Goring. Well, this, this is very much in confidence, Inspector. But had she lived, she might have become editor when Marjorie retired. As it is, Theresa Masters will get the job. Hmm. Is uh, Miss French retiring soon? Well, again, in confidence, she is a sick woman. Her doctors have ordered her to stop work within the next two months. Of course, the question of her successor has been under discussion for some time. You see, I believe in promotion from within. So the choice of her successor lay between Helen and Teresa. Marjorie favoured Teresa. I thought she was wrong. From that point of view, Helen's death was a a great personal tragedy for me. Hmm. I'd been told uh, she was emotionally involved with another member of the staff. If so, that wasn't my business. Godfrey, my dear, whatever is all this... Oh, I I beg your pardon. Hello, Nicholas. I've just seen the paper. I'm I'm shattered. Utterly shattered. Inspector, may I introduce Mr. Knight? Uh, Nicholas, this is Chief Inspector Tibbet of Scotland Yard. Oh, Uh, I'm delighted to meet you. Mr. Knight is one of our most brilliant young dress designers. I've heard all about you, Mr. Knight. About me? (laughs) Uh, nice things, I hope. Uh, you were at Mr. Goring's house last night, weren't you? Was I? Uh, I mean, uh, yes, yes, of course I was. <laughs> it's a lovely, lovely party, Godfrey. Yes. It's just too terrible to think that we have... Uh, I must go. Nose to the grindstone, you know. 
Goodbye, Inspector. Uh, Mr. Knight. Yes? I'd like to have a chat with you sometime. Perhaps you could come to the style office this afternoon. Uh, uh, no. Uh, come to my salon. I'm terribly busy. You do understand. Of course. Where? It's this building, first floor. Anyone will tell you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Godfrey. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Knight. A most talented young man, Inspector. Uh, don't be put off by his uh, somewhat flamboyant manner. People in his business tend to adopt extravagant attitudes. He's a very shrewd businessman, though. Uh, forgive me, but has he been involved in some sort of scandal lately? Certainly not. Oh, well. I must have been confusing him with somebody else. I know very little about the fashion world. It's a very strange world. Very unusual people, I'm afraid. Yes? Hello, darling. Lorna, what on earth are you doing here? Well, I had to come. I heard... Oh, this is Inspector Tibbet of Scotland Yard. Um, Inspector, my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Goring? Better sit down. Have you eaten? Of course not. Uh, Pierre, I'll have some uh, smoked salmon and chicken supreme with uh, some chablis. You know, the one I like. Now, darling, tell me all about it. Who was she? One of the walking sticks? Lorna. I always say the style girls look exactly like walking sticks. Straight suits, ramrod backbones, and lacquered hair. <coughs> I can't tell one from the other. Helen Pankhurst is dead. Oh. Is that the dark one with the big nose? Uh, yes. But what happened? The papers Look, said... Inspector Tibbet and I have to get back to work now. Uh, are you staying in town tonight? Well, it seems a sensible thing to do. Very well. I'll see you at home this evening. Well, I'll come and pick you up at the office. No, there's a police investigation going on. Don't be an idiot, darling. I'll, I'll tell you all about it later. Uh, Inspector, are you coming? Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Goring. Uh, goodbye, Inspector. See you later, darling. Um, if my wife should come to the office this afternoon, uh, visitors are not allowed, are they? If your wife wishes to come in, Mr. Goring, I'm sure... No, no, no. I'd, I'd, I'd rather she was not allowed in. There you go. I'll tell the sergeant. Thank you. Thank you, Inspector. Thank you very much, Miss Field. A very clear and concise account, if I may say so. Thank you, Inspector. Is there anything else? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about your suitcase. My suitcase? What about it? You left it in Miss Pankhurst's office, didn't you? Yes. Well, what was in it? Haven't you searched it? Just things from Paris, clothes and so on. Hmm. Can you think of any reason why someone should want to ransack your suitcase? What? What do you mean? Well, I think you'd better see for yourself. Is she... Is Helen... No, no, it's all right. There's nothing there except... Uh, well, we'll see. Come in, Miss Field. Why, my things. How dare he? He? Well, must have been a man, mustn't it? Not necessarily. Now, I want you to check up and see if there's anything missing. Anything at all. What about fingerprints? Oh, don't worry. That's already been attended to. You can go ahead. Everything seems to be here, Inspector. Can I take the case away? Certainly. Not very secure, is it? The lock's weak, and I've packed it too full, I'm afraid. It's liable to burst open. <coughs> I think it'll stay put now. Miss Field, would anyone else have had an opportunity of... Putting something into your case in Paris without you knowing? Oh, yes. And these trips to use our hotel rooms as offices. Everyone keeps wandering in with queries, especially to my room. And there's one person who was there practically all the time I was packing. Oh, who? That model girl, Veronica Spence. Terribly sorry to have kept you waiting, Inspector. I'm desperately busy, as you can see. Oh, I don't suppose you can tell me very much, Mr. Knight, but as an interested outsider, your opinion might be valuable. Oh, anything I can do... Yes. Did you know Helen Pankhurst? Mm -hmm. Oh, hardly at all. I know the fashion staff of style, intimately, of course, Teresa and the others, but Helen's was an office job. I'm trying to get at a true picture of the relationships between the people involved. What do you mean? Oh, Miss Pankhurst's relationships with her colleagues. Oh. Well, I'll tell you all I can. Of course, you realise the fashion world is a curious one. So everyone keeps on telling me. Well, it isn't that people aren't what they seem exactly. It's more that they exaggerate what they are to the point of absurdity. I had noticed. Mm. Well, I mean, take Patrick, for instance. He's an utter fraud. He's just an ordinary pig-headed Irishman. He's been forced to turn himself into a character. And take Theresa and Michael. What sort of marriage is that? Well, 
Uh, what sort is it? A farce. Teresa has the money, of course, but she's solid bone from the neck up. Michael's always had all sorts of other interests. What do you mean? Oh, this and that. One hears rumours. What rumours? No, oh, it was all pretty vague. He has nothing in common with Teresa, never had. I see. Uh, tell me about the party. Party? What party? I understand Mr. Goring asked a number of people back for a drink last night. Oh, that. Yes, he did. I've been working late up here, and about midnight I went down to the pub underneath for a nightcap. By the pub underneath, you mean the orangery? Mm, yes. It's useful if one lives here. Mm, pretty pricey pub. Anyway, at the orangery, you met Mr. Goring. Well, he just finished dinner with Horace Barry. Both in crashingly good form, I regret to say. Mm, what does that mean? Oh, Godfrey was doing his hearty one of the boys act. Must be hell on tonic water. I imagine they just clinched a business deal. I was utterly exhausted. I, I couldn't stand it. Then why did you accept uh, Mr. Goring's invitation? Well, I mean, it wouldn't do for me to be bad friends with style. You do see that, don't you? Yes, yes, I see it. Uh, so you and Mr. Barry drove onto Brunton Square while Mr. Goring uh, picked the others up. Was Mrs. Goring there? Lorna? No. She was at their place in the country. There's another clever fellow who married money. Indeed? Yes. She was Lorna Vincent. You know, the actress. Oh, I thought I knew her face. She's a very beautiful woman. Mm. The clothes are hell, though, aren't they? Mm, tell me, uh, did any of the style people strike you as being upset or uh, nervous? Well, Patrick was as rude as ever, thoroughly offensive. Theresa was a bit quiet, and poor Marjorie looked positively ill, I thought. What about Miss Field? Who's she? Miss French's secretary. You gave her a lift home. Oh, siren of Surbiton. What about her? Well, did she seem to be uh, just as usual? She could hardly have been more usual, poor dear. I, I don't really know. I'd never met her before. So, you dropped Miss Field and Mr. Barry and then came back here. Did you notice any uh, comings or goings when you got back? Huh? Anything out of the way happening opposite? Well, there was a girl coming out of the style offices, a terrible orange dress and a white stole. Odd-looking creature in spectacles. Oh, that'd be Miss Piper, huh? the features editor. Mm. Anyone else? Well, I, I caught a glimpse of Helen through the window, typing away. I see. Well, thank you very much. Can you tell me where I could contact Mr. Barry? You know him well, I believe. I work for him. Oh, and I thought, uh, I mean, you design on a pretty high level. And he makes huh? mass-produced clothes to sell in Wigan. Oh. oh, you don't understand, Inspector. That's where the money is these days, in the mass market. 5,000 dresses at 10 guineas are worth more than one dress at 100 guineas. The point of my salon here is simply to get my name known. Really? Oh, I mean, I was lucky. My a friend produced enough money for me to start up here. I really knew I'd arrive when Barry asked me to design his wholesale collection. You see, I have, uh, well, a flair, if you like, for translating Paris designs for my customers. Barry himself's vulgar and boring, but he knows the business. Well, where do I find him? 286 Pope Street. Well, were you in Paris last week, by the way? Certainly not. I never go to Paris. Everyone knows I was here the entire week. There's no need to get so excited. You said you translated some of the designs, so... I have an eye. I look at the photographs and I can see the cut. I can, I can see the seaming. I don't need a toile. Toile? What's a toile? It's... It's the model made and cut exactly as the original, but in cheap cotton. Oh. Manufacturers buy them in Paris, and very dear they are, too. So you make Paris copies without buying toile? Well, there's no law against it. I'd work from photographs. Yeah, that must save you a lot of money. Well, thank you, Mr. Knight. This has been most interesting. Oh, come in, Inspector. Thank you, Miss Piper. I hope this isn't too inconvenient. I have to leave it to it, I'm afraid. I've got to change for the theatre, but you said only half an hour. Yes, that's right. Mm. Uh, which was Miss Pankhurst's room? Uh, in here. I see. Very austere. Oh, Helen hated fuss. Oh, what's this letter? What? Hmm? Oh, she must have left it in the middle. It's funny, I don't remember noticing it before. I think I've got hold of the right stuff at last. It's not quite the same as one finds in Paris, but I've asked Teresa to bring me back a sample so that we can compare them. 
Hmm. I've practically made up my mind about the blue jersey dress. Well, nothing very personal here. Yeah. Helen lived for her work. Till Michael. Yeah, so it seems. Well, I'll keep this. I haven't got a sample of Miss Pankhurst's handwriting. Did she receive many letters? I don't know. But surely... You... Well, Helen always got up first in the morning. Well, it was a routine that she collected the post and read her letters in the kitchen while coffee was brewing and anything that didn't need answering, she put in the incinerator straight away. Hmm. What's that? Hmm. The ticket. The return half of a rail ticket tucked in the blotter. The 17th of last month. Now, that was uh, Saturday. I wonder, did, did Helen have a doctor in Hindhurst? No, she had the same doctor as me. Dr. Markham in Onslow Street. Hmm. The 17th. Uh, well, I, I can't remember the 17th, but I may have gone home for the weekend. I often do. Look, Inspector, is it all right for me to pack up Helen's clothes and so forth after you've been through them? They're like ghosts. Yes, I understand. Uh, well, I see no objection. Oh, good. Oh, forgive me if I leave you to look round on your own now. I, I must change. Please, Chief Inspector, please sit down. You uh, come about the murder at style, no? Uh, yes, Mr. Barry. I'm sorry to have to trouble you. Oh, oh, oh. no trouble, Inspector. No trouble in the smallest. Oh, obviously, you've heard what happened. Well, I've read the papers. Miss Pankhurst was poisoned. Well, I've come to see you because you dined with Mr. Goring on Tuesday evening and went to his house afterwards. I thought you might be able to give me your impression of the people who were there. You know the staff at Style fairly well, I presume? Oh, some of them. Miss French, great lady, great power. She does me honor to come twice a year to my big collections. Miss Masters, too. She knows fashion, but not always do we agree. Your taste is for the readers of style, I tell her. Very good. But me, I have to sell also to those whose taste is otherwise. <laughs> but wait till she sees my, my new Nicholas Knight range. Oh. Uh, this uh, party on Tuesday night, you all went back with Mr. Goring. What happened then? Well, now, uh, let me see. Uh, there was a lady there I'd not met before, a, a Miss Field. <laughs> I felt sorry for her because she's, uh, how you say, out of her ambience. So I speak to her about cats, <laughs> of which we are both very fond. Let's see. You uh, enjoy the party? No, I did not. Such rudeness. Patrick Walsh and Michael Healy. <laughs> that young man should keep to his camera. With it, he's a genius. But does that give him the right to insult me? Mm. Did anyone mention Miss Pankers? I don't remember. We didn't stay very long. Why? Because Walsh and Healy, they call me vulgar. <laughs> I put good money in their pockets. What for they complain? So, I go and speak of cats to poor little Miss Field. Uh, you left early, I gather. Yeah, I did. I was happy when Nicholas suggested and Miss Field. When she go and collect her things, this man Walsh come up and insult Nicholas. How did he insult him? He say... You think you get the support of style, you little... You use a very bad word, Inspector. Yeah. Then what? You say, I can tell you, some of us don't like what you do. Me and Helen, we know about you, and we're after you, you and your friend. What was Knight's reaction? Well, poor boy, he was without words. Such untruth. Then Miss Field come back, and we go. I see. Uh, how well do you know Mr. Goring? Ah, for business. We respect each other. Do you know his wife? <laughs> the beautiful Lorna. Yeah, I meet her when I spend the weekend at their country house. At uh, Hindhurst? Hindhurst? I don't know. It's at Virginia Water. Oh, stupid of me. Yes, I was uh, mixing him up with someone else. Uh, Mrs. Goring is a very striking woman, isn't she? <laughs> She's a spitfire. Oh, she leads him a dance, but... He's crazy for her, and he's happy. Perhaps it's good for a man who's a god in his business to be only a puppy dog in his home. <laughs> Inspector Tibbet. 
please, please come in. Is this an official visit? A friendly call. Uh, both, I hope, Mrs. Goring. Mind your head on that beam. <laughs> I'll poopsie, you lazy bitch. Sit down and have a drink. What would you like? <laughs> Just shut the dogs off. They're used to it. <laughs> Tea, if it's not too much trouble. No trouble at all. I'll get it. Uh, could you leave it a little while? I'd like to talk to you for a moment or two first. Of course. I'm tremendously pleased to see you, Inspector, but I don't see how I can possibly help you. I haven't been to London for months. Well, except yesterday, of course, when I met you. I envy you. It must be pleasant for your husband, too, to get away from town. Oh, Godfrey hates the country. He lives in the London flat and only comes down at weekends. Mm -hmm. His work keeps him in town, of course. Uh, a lot of people uh, commute every day from here, don't they? Mm? Oh, Godfrey doesn't. Uh. And Mrs. Goring, how well did you know Helen Pankhurst? Oh, I don't know any of them except to look at. Godfrey doesn't approve of wives who butt into their husbands' business lives. And neither do I. Isn't it lonely for you here? Oh, I've got my Mrs. Adams. She cleans every morning. And the dogs. And neighbors. Oh. Awful people, rich and respectable. However, they have their uses. I was at the ghastly bridge party on Tuesday, so I've got an alibi. Mm -hmm. Where? At the Peterson. They're about three miles away. Here's the address. Thank you. Uh, do you know Hindhurst at all, Mrs. Goring? Uh, no, it's the other end of the county. Why do you ask that? I thought you might be able to help me. It seems Miss Pankhurst may have consulted a doctor there. And uh, as it's in Surrey, I thought perhaps it was someone you and your husband uh, recommended to her. No, I'm afraid not. Our doctor's in Harley Street. Was, uh, was Helen ill? Apparently not, which makes it interesting. Oh, well, it's only a vague hope. Ah, I love that cup of tea. <laughs> you haven't asked me much. I've asked all I want to, and you've been very helpful. Goodness. I've told you nothing. Exactly. You hardly knew Helen, and you haven't been to London in months. So there's nothing more to be said. I suppose not. By the way, if you do locate that doctor... Yeah? Uh, I have a friend who just moved to Hindhurst. Funnily enough, she rang me only last week to ask if I knew a good family doctor in that part of the world. So perhaps if you find him... I mean, if Helen went to him, he must be reliable. Certainly. I'll tell your husband. Oh, no... He'll never remember. Ring me. I'm in the book. Very well, I'll do that. Thank you. Now I'll uh, I'll get that tea. Oh, come in then, my boy. Come on in. Uh, it was good of you to see me at this hour of the night, Mr. Walsh. You didn't give me much choice. Well, come on in here. This is my studio. It's everything, in fact. Not much more to the flat. Well, sit down, sit down, if you can find a chair. Well, this is a beautiful room. Uh, it's a workroom. Uh, uh, have a drink. Thank you. I will. Can't offer you a choice. You can have Irish whiskey and like it. Oh. Here you are. Thank you. Well. <sighs> Helen telephoned you the night before she died, didn't she? Well, if she did, any law against it? Why didn't you tell me? Well, you didn't ask. What did she say? Nothing much, just a friendly call. Hmm. Just listen to this. The doctor says it's quite definite. I don't know what I'm going to do. He'll never leave her. You know that. I honestly wish I were dead. A damn fool, Alwyn. Hmm. Miss Piper told me what she'd overheard. Very properly. I don't suppose that one's ever done anything that wasn't very proper. That's a trouble. I think she told me the truth, did she? I don't believe Helen was murdered. I think the darling girl took her own life because she had troubles. Now, if that's so, there's no point in telling you what those troubles were. Now, if she was murdered, they had nothing to do with it. You should look in other directions. Such as? Well, that's your job. Mr. Walsh. Can't you understand that I'm trying to get at the truth? So long as you go on making such a mystery of Helen's private life, I have to investigate it, in case it has a bearing on her death. If it hasn't, anything you tell me will go no further. If only I could believe you. You must believe me. 
All right. I'll tell you all I know. It's precious little. Well, it may be what we need. Helen was in love. With who? Oh, she never told me, and I didn't ask. She simply told me the situation, and a hell of a situation it was. The man had a wife he was tied to, not only by loyalty, but for social and business reasons. He told Helen that when he was in a position to, he'd get a divorce. God knows when that would be. Meanwhile, they kept it quiet. I see. Not very pleasant for Helen. Well, that's not all. A few months ago, she got very worried about the man's health. She was a doctor's daughter and knew a bit about such things. So she persuaded him to come with her to a doctor for a checkup. Did his wife know? Oh, no. Helen told the doctor the man, well, let's call him X, was our husband. He agreed privately he'd let her know the results of the tests and keep any really bad news from X. Mm -hmm. And the results came through the day she died? Yes, incurable cancer. He has a year to live. I presume he still doesn't know. I see. And when she rang you... Well, she was in despair. There was only a year left, and she wanted to spend it with him. But he would never leave his wife unless he knew the truth. And Helen was determined to spare him that. Hmm. Do you really not know who he is? I don't. Why didn't you want me to find out about Helen and Michael Healy? <laughs> You're trying to trap me. No, I'm asking a question. Everybody else rushed to tell me about Helen and Michael. Everyone except you. That blasted Alwyn. Not only Alwyn. Miss French, Mr. Goring, and even Miss Masters. And uh, Michael Healy didn't deny it. Oh, well. Now she's dead. Is the man Michael Healy? Well, she never told me. Oh, I know there was talk. It may have been right or it may have been wrong. One other little point. You have a key to the style building, haven't you? Yeah, what of it? Nothing, I just wanted to check. Do you often work late? <laughs> Not me. I'm too smart and too old. I have me work, you see. Do you imagine I enjoy doing layouts for a fashion magazine when I ought to be painting? Yes, I'm sure you do. <laughs> yes, you're right, of course. I love it or I wouldn't do it. But it's not me real work. Oh, no. I'm a prostitute. That's what it comes to. A poor, bloody tart, plimy trade in Earl Street. The only consolation is that the prices are high. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Are you married yourself, Mr. Waltz? <laughs> Certainly not. Have you ever been? I can look it up, you know, at Somerset House. Well, you wouldn't want to make trouble for an innocent man that might have been foolish in his youth. Well, that depends on whether it has any bearing on the case. None in the world. Well, come on, tell me. I was 21, she was 19. I was an art student and she was reading for a degree in literature. We ran away and got married. We hadn't two pennies to rub together. Oh, the first year was fine. Then there was trouble. She was as ambitious as the devil. Wanted a great career for herself and me. I wanted to live in a garret and paint. The rows got worse and after three years she up and left me. It was very long ago. Uh, did you get a divorce? Of course not. We're both Catholics. And when did you meet her again? What the hell are you getting? If you'd really lost touch, you'd have made no bones about telling me about the marriage. I think your wife is Marjorie French, the distinguished editor of Style. For God's sake, keep it quiet. Why? You, you wouldn't understand. Mr. Walsh, how long has your wife been at Style? Uh, 35 years. And you? Three years. She got you the job. Look, if you think Marjorie would employ anyone unless she considered them right person for the job, you're and making a what pick. did you do in those other 32 years? Paint it. Successfully? No. You must have been very glad of the job. Get out. Get out and stay out. And keep your bloody mouth shut or I'll break your neck. I'm afraid it's my job to be inquisitive. I don't enjoy it, and I am discreet. Thanks for the whiskey. I let myself out. Wanted to see me, Inspector. Yes, Miss French. I want your help again. Oh, anything I can do? Well, I've been told, until I'm tired of hearing it, that Helen was having an affair with Michael Healy. You were the first person to draw my attention to it. Yes. Why? Because I thought it would help you in your inquiries. That's the right phrase, isn't it? I don't think you told me the truth. But why on earth should I lie? I didn't mean that you lied. You kept something back. You didn't tell me that Michael Healy is dying. What? I have no idea where you got hold of that story, Inspector. It's absolute nonsense. 
Well, Helen told Mr. Walsh about this the night before she died. She told Patrick. What did she tell Patrick? That the man she loved was dying of cancer. And he didn't know. And neither did his wife. Oh, no. Miss Frisk, oh. you all right? I... I'll get you some water. Uh, uh, yes, please. Some water. Thank you. I'm afraid I get these silly fainting fits occasionally. It's nothing to worry about. Uh, to go back to what we were saying. Yes. This story is nonsense. Please don't spread it. Patrick is a wild Irishman and he loves to spin a tale. I know him very well. You should. 32 years is a long time. Oh. You know about that. I... I... I do hope you'll be discreet, Inspector. I'm always as discreet as I can be. Why do you want it kept secret? Mr. Goring is against employing husbands and wives. It's company policy. What about... Teresa and Michael, that's a very special case. Godfrey isn't really happy about it. I had to fight hard to get Michael. So, when I met Patrick again, I knew that although he was just the person for art editor... I could never go to Mr. Goring and propose my husband for the job. So we agreed to let the past remain dead for the time being. For the time being? What do you mean? I'm very fond of Patrick. This is a great secret, Inspector, but when I retire, Patrick and I are going to live together again. As far as the outside world's concerned, we'll get married. They need never know we've been married all along. I see. I take it Mr. Walsh is enthusiastic about the idea, too. Of course. But, Nicholas, I am always frank with you. So why are you not frank with me? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. You've been listening to gossip. Well, even Godfrey's been hinting. Gossip? Hinting? No. I just keep my eyes and ears open. Who talked to you? Who told you those wicked lies? Nobody tell me. I read this. Well, that's an American magazine. Nothing to do with London. Now, you just listen to this, my friend. Are Paris designs being pirated? That is the big question raised by persistent rumors that some wholesalers produce accurate copies of Paris models without having bought the toile and before the official release date for photographs. Here, let me see. Yes, but they say it's impossible, so why worry? Because me... I know it is not impossible. What do you mean? Do you mean I've been pirating? Shh. Not so loud, not so loud. That detective over there must not hear you. No. No, he mustn't. Not that I've got anything to hide. Hello, Uncle Henry. Oh, sorry I'm late. I've been sleuthing for you. Oh, I've had such a hell of a morning with that awful little creature, Nicholas. Uh, Veronica. There's something fishy going on, and I'm going to find out what... Veronica, for God's sake, keep your voice down. Nicholas Knight is sitting over there. Is he? Where? Oh, yes, I see. Order your lunch. Eat it. Shut up. Well, it's all right. They're going. Now, what I wanted to say was... Look, Veronica, I want you to stay out of this. I found out things that make it, well, obvious that it's dangerous. Oh. I'm asking you to stop this ridiculous amateur detection... And I'd prefer it if you had nothing to do with Nicholas Knight's show. Oh, but all the clothes have been fitted on me now. I couldn't let him down. It wouldn't be professional. Well, all right. I'll have as little to do with all these people as possible. Do you know that Rachel Field thinks that you got at her suitcase in Paris? Me? Oh, how ridiculous. Did someone ask you to slip anything into her case? Anything, however innocent? No, I never went near the wretched case. Could anyone else have got at it? Oh, I don't think so. I was in her room all the time she was packing. Honestly, I wouldn't have dared touch anything. She's so fussy. Everything all neatly done up in tissue paper. <laughs> I just fling things in. Mm. And whoever searched the case must have drawn a blank. Well, what is all this nonsense about finding out something important? Oh, it's nothing. Very, very. Anyhow, you said not to talk about it here. Yeah. Well, come and see your aunt and me tomorrow. Come and have lunch and we'll talk it over. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Henry, I can't. I'm going to stay with the Blakes for the weekend. You know, Nancy's parents, the girl I share the flat with. Oh. 
Well, come around for a drink tonight. Oh, I can't. I'm going to the pictures with Donald Mackay. Oh, I do hope they've got steak and kidney pie here. I adore steak and kidney pie, and I'm ravenous. Great tragedy. Great tragedy, Inspector. Such a charming woman, and so young. Yes, indeed. She seems to have been a brilliant girl, too. But which of us can blame her? If she saw fit to take her own life... What makes you say that, Dr. Markham? Uh, well, Inspector, I, I presume the post-mortem revealed her state of health. You were her doctor. That's why I'm here. What was her state of health? I imagine she was suffering from cancer. You imagine? Well, I'd better explain. Miss Pankhurst very seldom came to me for treatment, but I saw her two months ago. She wouldn't let me examine her. She was very distressed. She asked me for the name of the best cancer specialist in London. For herself? She maintained it was for a friend. That's a very usual deception. All I could do was give her the name and let her go. Hmm. What specialist did you send her to? Well, I'm not sure whether I should tell you, but... In the circumstances, I suppose... Uh, yes. Sir James Braithwaite of Wimpole Street. Hi, dear Inspector. What can I do for you? I trust your visit has no sinister significance. Uh, Sir James, have you read in the press about the death of Miss Helen Pankhurst? I'm afraid I limit my reading to the international situation in the book reviews. Miss mm. Pankhurst? Who was she? And the assistant editor of Style. Was she ever a patient of yours? I think not, but we can check with the card index. Uh, uh, no. No, I've never had a patient of that name. She may have used an assumed name. This is a photograph you recognize her? Ah, yes. Who was she? Mrs. Charles Dodgson. She was not my patient. Her husband was and still is. Oh. What was your diagnosis of his condition? Well, really, Inspector, I hardly think that... I'd better tell you that this is a murder investigation. Murder? Oh, I thought you meant... No, that would have been out of character. She was a very brave woman. Well, please, tell me your diagnosis. Inoperable cancer. He had a year to live. Did you tell him? No. His wife particularly asked me to keep it from him. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, of course, how stupid of me. His card isn't here. Mrs. Dodson, when she telephoned, emphasized that her husband was only free to see me at weekends. She told me they could easily arrange to spend the weekend near my country house. Where is it? Just outside Hindhurst. I see. And uh, what did you tell Mr. Dodson? Well, I was pretty sure of my diagnosis from the beginning, but he came for an X-ray a fortnight later. I told him he probably had a stomach ulcer and he went away quite happy. And uh, Tuesday of this week, the X-ray results came through? Monday evening, actually. Yeah. Sorry, you telephoned Mrs. Dodson? Uh, no, she rang me. She asked me not to telephone. What reason did she give? Well, in cases like this, there's always the danger of the wrong person answering the telephone. I asked her to come and see me. She did so on the Tuesday, and I told her the facts. She behaved splendidly. Inspector, am I to understand that she was not, in fact, Mrs. Dodson? You are. Well, then forgive me, but I'm concerned for my patient. Who will look after him? He has a wife. Whether she will be as brave and as sensible as Miss Pankhurst, I can't say. In due course, I'll send her to see you. Good morning, Inspector. You're starting early for a Monday morning. Uh, Miss Masters, I have a favor to ask you. Could you get me a ticket for Nicholas Knight's show tomorrow? Yes, of course I can, but... Good. Can you also tell me the release date for this season's Paris photographs? 27th of February. Hello? No, Nicholas, I've told you before, I haven't the slightest idea where she is. She should have been here at 10, and she simply didn't turn up. I've telephoned her at home, and Nancy didn't know either. Hmm. I'll let you know if I hear anything. Right. Bye. One of our models has let us down. Oh? Which one? That wretched new girl, Veronica Spence. Did you say her flatmate didn't know where she was? No. Nancy hadn't a clue. She said Veronica had been staying with friends for the weekend. Spectre, what's the matter? Uh, you don't know, of course. Veronica's my niece. Oh, good heavens. Ghastly. Well, I, I do apologize. Nancy doesn't know. She told me she was spending the weekend with Nancy. But then where is she? I'd very much like to know. 
I think I'd better have a word with Donald Mackay. Where is she? Where's Veronica? I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. Oh, yes, you do. Where is she? Oh, isn't she home? She's missing. When did you last see her? Last Wednesday evening. You're lying. She told me herself she was going out with you on Friday evening. Well, we did have a date, but I had to cancel it. My mother was taken ill, and I had to leave early and go down to the country. She's better now. My mother, I mean. Did Veronica tell you what she was doing at the weekend? No, I didn't see her. I just telephoned to cancel the date. Hello? Oh, yes, Nancy. What? Why did you say you didn't know? I see. Where is she now? Thank you, Nancy. Huh? What time is it handed in? Right, hop in a taxi and bring that telegram straight round. Hmm. Nancy Blake had second thoughts and decided to tell me the truth. Or what she imagined to be the truth. I yes? She said Veronica was at the White Hart in Porchester with you. What? But, well, you, you can see for yourself she isn't. Nancy said you'd arranged to go away together and you called it off on Friday because your mother was ill. Well, uh, well, yes. I, I didn't think I need tell you that because... No. Uh, I shall have plenty to say to you later on, young man. But, but it, it wasn't... Uh... Now, for the moment, I want to ask you one thing. Did you send Veronica a wire saying that your mother was better and asking her to meet you at Waterloo at 11 o'clock Saturday? No, no, of course I didn't. Ah, I was afraid not. Somebody did. And she went to Waterloo. Oh, God, no. Who else knew your mother was ill? Were everyone in the office? And how many people knew about the weekend jaunt? Most people, I'm afraid. What do you mean? Well, you know Veronica. She chatted about it a bit. Oh, so everyone in the place except me knew that you and Veronica were off for what in my day used to be called a dirty weekend. If you don't mind my saying so, sir, you're terribly old-fashioned. That aspect of it can wait. The point is that you didn't go away together. So, Veronica was deliberately lured to Waterloo by a fake telegram from someone who knew all about your plans. Well, you can go now, but don't leave the building. I'll need you again. When all this panic started, I was having a talk to Miss Masters, and I want to finish it. Well, Inspector, I fixed up the ticket for Nicholas's show. What else can I do for you? Miss Masters, what happened to the small parcel Helen asked you to bring back from Paris? Oh, good heavens, I've forgotten all about it. <laughs> that shows how vague I am. You know what it was? Yes. I'm sorry, I forgot. But it isn't important, is it? Silly little thing like that. I think it cost Helen her life. What? Where is it now? In my case, uh, no. No? Now you mention it, it wasn't there when I unpacked. How weird. Somebody took it. Oh, surely not. Was your case locked? No. And it was in the dark room all night? Yes. But you mean someone stole... Not stole, exactly. Someone was Helen. Then where is it now? My guess is it doesn't exist any longer. I don't think I left it behind. I know who might remember. Who? Veronica. I was so rushed on the last day that she went out and bought the stuff for me. Perhaps she has it still. Perhaps. But I hope to God you're wrong. Well, I read all about it in the paper, Inspector, so I thought I must come and see you. You're sure it was this girl you saw? Uh, yes, I, I noticed her because she was so pretty. Even with that funny coloured lipstick. Mm. In the ladies' cloakroom at Waterloo, just after 11 on Saturday morning. Yes, I know the time because I had to catch the 11.12. Yeah. And what was the last you saw of her? Well, we went into adjoining conveniences. When I came out, she was still in there. Anything else? Well, she looked very happy. I said to myself, that girl's going to meet some young man. I do hope you find her, Inspector. Such a lovely girl. Is it the pretty one in the red court here, Benin? Yes, Mrs. O'Reilly. Yes, that's her. The ticket collector is sure that she never got on the Porchester train. When did she come in? Oh, don't ask me. Middle of the morning, that's all I know. Mm -hmm. I took her penny and showed her in. She had a suitcase with her. She was as pretty as a picture. Ah, that'll be some model or film star, I thought. Did you see her leave? No, it's funny, but I didn't. Of course, it's a busy time Saturday with all the ladies tired from shopping. Uh, she must have slipped out while I was attending to some other lady. Yes. Yes, I suppose she must have. Well, Inspector Tibbet, there's mm. an urgent message for you. Could you get back to the yard right away? Mm. 
What's it in aid of, Sergeant? Well, it seems it's about this case. The young girl who's disappeared. There's some news. What sort of news? Well, I don't know, sir. They wouldn't say on the phone. I see. Well, thank you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, you're welcome. If you remember anything else, please get in touch with me. I will. It's all rather macabre, isn't it? Not a very happy send-off for Nicholas's show. What isn't? Oh, I, I didn't see you. I, I just meant all this tragedy of Helen. Oh, uh, Helen. Is there any news of that missing model, girl? Not as far as we know. Oh, it's a terrible nuisance. I've had to reorganize my show entirely, but entirely. Well, if there is any news, we'll soon hear it. The inspector's coming over. What? What's he doing here? Uh, didn't I tell you? He asked for a ticket. Maybe he's developing an interest in note couture. Good afternoon, Inspector. Uh, good afternoon. I am. Um, look, this seems an odd time and place to choose, but I feel it's only fair to tell you all before the official announcement. As you are all involved, in a way. Uh, is it bad news? Yes. Veronica? Yes. She was found under a haystack near Hockton in Essex. She'd been strangled. Oh, my God. Essex. Whatever was she doing there? The spot she was found was only a few miles from the home of Donald Mackay's parents. Donald? Yes. Didn't turn up at the office this morning. My God, a murdered little bastard. Have you got him? Not yet. He's disappeared. And are we to assume he also killed Helen? That would seem an inevitable conclusion, Mr. Healy. But why? I can't go into all that now. It'll come out of the trial. Inspector, I think we should ask Mr. Knight to cancel his show. Oh, no, Miss French. No, that would be grossly unfair, and Veronica certainly wouldn't have wanted it. Please, Mr. Knight, carry on as if this hadn't happened. <laughs> Number 74. Forget me not. Well, what do you think of the show, Inspector? Well, uh, I know nothing about it, of course, but I was impressed on the whole. He's a clever young man. Very. We're nearly at the end. Just one more model. Another evening dress? It'll be a wedding dress, I think. Number 75. Sweet mystery. Oh, you are right. Now, this one is beautiful. Will we see the bride's face, or will she stay veiled? I expect there'll be a dramatic gesture when she gets to the end of the catwalk. Veronica! <gasps> oh, but she's dead! Don't come near me, she's dead! I came to give you this, Miss Masters. It's what Helen asked you to bring from Paris. Veronica! I... Of course, Miss Field can tell you all about it. She told me when I helped her to pack. Rachel! You lying, cheating bitch! Inspector, there's your murderess. She killed Helen. Nicky, you fool. It's a trick to catch us. Rachel Field and Nicholas Field, otherwise Nicholas Knight. I arrest you both for the willful murder of Helen Pankhurst. And I must warn you that... Leave Nicky alone. It was me. It was me. Well, I hope you two are thoroughly ashamed of yourselves. Well, sir... Ashamed? I like that. You'd never have caught them without us, and you know it. We were baffled, admits Chief Inspector Tibbet of Scotland Yard. We were not baffled. I admit your ridiculous scheme came in useful, Veronica, but only when I took charge of it. Well, you see, I didn't know who it was. I guess how I'd they... be grateful if you'd begin at the beginning, Inspector. I'm a little lost. Well, I think I'd better miss French, but it's difficult to know where to begin. I suppose the right place is Helen's love affair with Mr. Goring. Mr. Goring? But I thought it was Michael. So did most people. There was no affair in the ordinary sense of the word, Inspector. They loved each other and hoped to marry when the magazine was stable enough financially. That was all. I know. Difficulty started, didn't they, when uh, Alwyn started to share Helen's flat. Oh, yes. Godfrey was away in the States at the time, and the flat sharing was meant to be a very temporary arrangement. But Alwyn stayed on. So Michael and Teresa agreed that Helen should use them as an excuse when she was meeting Godfrey. And then uh, Alwyn saw Teresa at the theatre and jumped to the wrong conclusions. Yes, they all talked it over and decided to let her go on, believing it was Michael. Oh, poor Mr. Goring. What will happen to him now? His wife loves him. I don't think she's been as much in the dark as everyone imagined. She tried to get out of me the name of Helen's doctor. I have a feeling that she'll nurse him devotedly as long as she can. But then, Helen's murder... It was nothing to do with her love affair. 
I first guessed when Veronica told me that Rachel Field was a meticulous packer who wrapped everything up in tissue paper. Tissue hmm. paper? But what Exactly. Is that? When Helen was killed and uh, Rachel's suitcase rifled, there were things scattered all over the office, but not a shred of tissue paper. Uh-huh. Whoever went through the case had removed it. And Rachel herself never commented on its absence, so she was involved somehow. Then uh, some writing appeared on a piece of paper that had been blank before. Where? In Helen's flat. An unfinished letter on her blotting pad. Invisible ink. Yes, that's what Helen asked Teresa to bring back from Paris. She guessed how the designs were being pirated, and she and Godfrey wanted to check that it was possible. Do you mean that the tissue paper was used... On the tissue paper in Rachel's case were traced paper patterns of the pieces of a toile with sewing instructions in invisible ink. Rachel had come home, unpack, and send the sheets to Nicholas Knight. We had only to hold them in front of a fire. And there is Paris models. I still don't understand, Inspector. Who stole the tissue paper from Rachel's case? It's rightful owner. What? At the Goring's party, Patrick had too much to drink. He said to Knight, whom he loathes, Helen and I know what you're up to, or worse that effect. Knight was rattled. He and Rachel had a talk. And they decided that she'd better go back and collect the case. Nothing sinister about that. She could simply walk off with it. Cool. She let herself in with her own key. She got as far as Helen's office, looked in, and stopped dead in the shadows. Well, Helen probably hadn't even noticed, but Rachel's case had burst open and the tissue paper was sticking out, with the markings on it showing clearly in the heat of the fire that Helen had switched on. Oh. And on Helen's desk, a bottle of invisible ink from Paris, which Helen had taken from Teresa's case. So Rachel went to the dark room and got the cyanide. Yes. She put it in Helen's thermos, wiped it clean of fingerprints, and slipped away. Then she saw Nicholas and told him what he must do. He must watch Helen from his flat window. Watch her? Do you mean he could yes, see... Yes, he saw her die. He told me himself he could see Helen working. Once she was dead, on Rachel's instructions, he was to go to the office and remove the tissue paper and the invisible ink. He did exactly what he was told, but he was in such a panic, he never thought to leave everything looking normal. If he'd only repacked the case and shut it, he'd never have known. Have they confessed? They've filled in the details. But why then? They're such an unlikely pair to work together. <sighs> Rachel was Nicholas's sister. What? what? But they're not a bit alike. Well, there is a resemblance, actually, once you know. Rachel financed him when he set up in business. They kept the brother-sister bit quiet because of Goring's attitude to relationships in business. I checked with something else yesterday. In fact, I had got most of this when my idiot niece decided to take a hand. Well, it was a very bright idea, I thought. I suspected Nicholas, but I knew he must have an accomplice because he never went to Paris. So I went round saying loudly I knew he was up to something and then dramatically disappeared. And Donald was to watch Nicholas place like a hawk until the accomplice turned up. A silly idea. I've seldom heard. Oh, seems to have succeeded in deceiving a lot of people. But how did you do it? Well, we were going to Porchester to disappear. But then Donald's mother got ill. So we thought up a much better plan. He went home on Friday and I sent myself a telegram so I could show it to Nancy. Oh, I acted so suspiciously. I hope the man at the post office remembered me. I couldn't have done more if I'd stood on my head. Well, anyway, the telegram came and I showed it to Nancy and went to Waterloo. And when I was safely locked in the loo there, I changed into my old blue suit and took off all my makeup and put on some wool with spectacles. Oh, and I let my hair down. Yes, I had guessed. Why? You left hairpins all over the place and a face tissue covered with oh. mascara and that terrible brown lipstick. That plus the fact that everyone knows you're going in and no one knows you're coming out. Yes, I know. I thought I'd been pretty clever. I simply took a tube to Liverpool Street and a train to Hockton and had a lovely long weekend with Donald's parents, who are sweeties. I stayed down there on Monday. Well, then, you see, Miss French, it was all up because they saw the papers with pictures of me all over them. I had to tell them everything, and then they went and rang Uncle Henry at Scotland Yard, and he wasn't there. I was collecting your hairpins from the ladies' lavatory at Waterloo Street. Oh, good. Anyway, Uncle Henry came back and rang the Mackays and was absolutely furious. I thought the telephone was going to explode. Oh. Then the nice policeman from Chelmsford came and smuggled me out. We drove to London like a whirlwind, with me hidden on the floor under a rug and the siren going. It was fabulous. And then I got smuggled into the back of Nicholas Knight's place. Oh, that was rather awful, because some people had to know, but not Nicholas. 
And the girls were dead scared. I had a lot of helpers. Miss French was one. Miss French? Did you know? No, her? I knew nothing. Your uncle asked me to bring Miss Field to the show. I had no idea why. Oh. Well, I must go, Inspector. I have a lot of work to do and no secretary. Oh, I'm glad it's finished now. Tell me something. Was it necessary? Necessary? What do you mean? Well, how talented was Nicholas Knight? Why, he's brilliant. Nicholas was... is a very gifted young man. I think your first choice of tense was the right one. So he'd have got there in the end without any of this? Probably. He just wanted a shortcut. A shortcut? Mm, how many murders have been just that? Helen is dead. Knight's career finished. And none of it was necessary at all. Greed and folly. They'll always be with us, I suppose. I'd probably be out of a job if they weren't. In Murder a la Mode, the novel by Patricia Moyes, adapted for radio by Betty Davis, Chief Inspector Tibbet was played by Rupert Davis. The rest of the cast was as follows. Helen Pankhurst, Margaret Woolfitt. Teresa Masters, Monica Gray. Rachel Field, Barbara Bolton. Patrick Walsh, Barry Keegan. Marjorie French, Joan Matheson. Michael Healy, Michael Spice. Donald Mackay, Nigel Lambert. Alwyn Piper, Joe Manning Wilson. Godfrey Goring, John Bentley. Veronica Spence, Elizabeth Proud. Ernest, Brian Hewlett. Nicholas Knight, John Rye. Lorna Goring, Margot Johns. Horace Barry, John Gabriel, Dr. Markham, Godfrey Kenton, Sir James, Malcolm Hayes, Mrs. O'Reilly, Kathleen Helm, fashion commentator, Jill Carey. The play was produced by Betty Davis.